Many people love the sea, some people love fishing, others love the waves and the peace and quietness the sea has to offer. Obviously, spending time near the sea is good, but it can be quite dangerous just the same. Some people simply disappear in the depth of waters, some people, however, manage to survive. Those lucky ones remain alive even after a long driftage that lasts many days and nights. That's exactly the sort of story you're gonna hear right now. It's about a guy who managed to live after 14 months in the ocean. A little bit of backstory. Jose Salvador Herveranga is a Latin American fisherman from Salvador. This guy managed to make history after spending a very long time in the Pacific. While most sailors usually die within just a few days or weeks after being lost and running out of supplies, Jose managed to live amidst the vast ocean for 438 days. This unbelievable story sounds like a weird, untrue legend, but it is real alright. Drifting through the ocean, Alvarenga struggled with dehydration and hunger, and with all the strength he had left, he didn't allow emotions to take over. The 36-year-old fisherman was able to swim about 10,000 kilometers to save his own fragile life. But let's start with the very beginning, shall we? The beginning. So the man's name is Jose Alvarenga. He was born in Salvador, in South America. He had a troubled life pretty much from the start. He was a lonely type. At the time of the faithful voyage, Jose had not seen his parents for over eight years, and he never seen his own daughter. He was refused custody after her birth. The sea was all he cared about, and the only thing that brought interest to his life. In November 2012, he planned a small sea journey. The plan was to try to catch a lot of fish and return back to the port. Alvarenga's partner refused to go. Instead, the 24-year-old Enrique Cordoba from Mexico joined the fisherman. Despite that Jose Alvarenga knew about the dangers ahead, he did not check all the necessary equipment properly. He believed that nothing would happen during the 30-hour journey, and so he neglected a number of important things. For instance, they did not take canvases that would protect them from rain. Also, they did not recharge their batteries, so they only had half the charge. And finally, they didn't make sure their GPS navigator was waterproof. But anyways, both fishermen were determined to make a trip and sailed away on November 17 in 2012. The beginning was very promising, however. Cardoba and Alvarenga caught a lot of fish. The weight of the catch exceeded 500 kilograms. They would make a lot of money selling all that fish. But unfortunately, things went wrong, and they only escalated from bad to worse. On their way back, dark clouds began appearing in the sky. It was clear that a thunderstorm was about to begin. And when it finally began, Cordoba and Alvarenga were not ready for it. The fishermen tried their best. Fighting against the raging sea, the storm was too strong, and all their efforts were in vain. And although their boat didn't sink, it was badly damaged. But the worst thing was that they lost their course. As an experienced fisherman, Alvarenga remained calm. The same could not be said about the young Cordoba, who was clearly shocked by such experience. Suddenly the storm calmed down, and in the distance Alvarenga saw a patch of land. The hope returned to the fishermen, and Alvarenga tried to contact the port through radio to tell them that they lost their course. The conversation was short. Jose was told that a team of rescuers would soon come to rescue them, but it turned out they could not find the fishermen because they were lost in the storm and what's worse, their GPS got wet and couldn't show their location. And soon the storm started again. The waves began to crash against the boat, hurling it from side to side. They almost drowned, but thanks to Jose, everything turned out alright. Both fishermen were forced to throw away the big haul in order to save the boat from drowning. But then it turned out that it was not enough, so they had to throw the ice away, the fuel, the anchor, everything went down. A faulty engine, a wet GPS, and useless radios. They practically got rid of all their stuff. Driftage Alvarenga and Cordoba were lost in the Pacific. They didn't have any food. They had no water, communication was lost, and on top of that, they didn't have any equipment for survival. After the storm calmed down, the two lonely fishermen started to drift in the boat that had no motor and was far away from the land. Soon it got colder, it started to rain, so both men were constantly wet and shivering. Alvarenga and Cordoba turned over the fish container to hide from rain. When it ended, two men started to deal with the consequences of the storm. 
Cordoba scooped up the rain and seawater from the boat so they wouldn't drown, and Alvarenga began to fish with his bare hands. Luckily, he knew how to do that, and he was pretty good at it too. The day seemed like month. When Jose was fishing, he passed the catch to Cordoba, who cleaned the fish and let it dry in the sun. He would also catch and eat turtles. In order not to die of thirst, the fishermen were forced to drink turtle blood, which was very creepy. Fortunately, this was not always necessary, because they managed to collect rainwater from time to time. In addition to fish and turtles, the fishermen would pick up the garbage that was passing by. Sometimes they managed to catch jellyfish and even birds that flew close to the boat. All the same, this was not enough to satisfy hunger. Alvarenga constantly nibbled his nails. Days evolved into weeks, and weeks into months. Both men had to talk a lot so that they wouldn't go crazy. But this created another problem. It took a lot of their energy. As Jose recalls, they often talked about their families. Alvarenga said that he regrets that he didn't see his parents for almost 10 years, because if he would die in the sea, he will never see them again. After some time, Cordoba got very ill because of constant exhaustion and eating bad food. He couldn't eat anymore, and his condition began to deteriorate, while Alvarenga held on still. Realizing that death was inevitable, Cordoba asked Jose to promise that if he survived and make it back, he would go to Mexico to visit his parents. The same thing was promised by Cordoba to Alvarenga. So the fishermen had a kind of verbal contract. According to Alvarenga, one morning Cordoba became completely ill. He died very quickly. It was a big shock for Jose, who regarded the guy as his true friend. This incident jangled Jose's nerves pretty badly. For the next six days, he did not bury Cordoba, hoping that rescuers would finally find them. The crazy thing was that he kept on talking to the dead guy. After six days, Jose realized that he was losing his mind. He was going completely nuts, and he decided to bury Cordoba by putting his body into the water. Total Desolation Jose was left completely alone. He would stare at the horizon searching for ships. He would sometimes notice cargo ships, but they were too far away to notice him. In order not to go crazy, Alvarenga created a whole new universe in his head. Mentally, he would slowly walk around the world where he was surrounded by people. Of course, in reality, he was just laying in his boat in the middle of the ocean. On the 13th of January in 2014, after 438 days of sailing, Jose saw the silhouette of an island, which appeared from the fog. He first thought he was hallucinating, but he soon realized that it was real because usually his hallucinations lasted just a few seconds. Jose immediately headed for the island and started to drift. Only one hour later, he reached the island. He jumped off the boat heading in the direction of the island. It is very hard to put into words how Jose felt when he finally reached the solid ground. For the first time in 438 days, he felt soil under his bare feet. He was soon spotted by locals who first thought he was some kind of aborigine. Since Jose spoke only Spanish, no one could understand him. But there was one guy, a student, who spoke Spanish quite well. So he translated Jose's story. Finally, the nightmare was over, and Jose himself started to prepare for his trip back home. So one day after the rescue, Jose was put in a ship and sent to Latin America. It seemed like the nightmare was finally over, but Jose was up for some new challenges. First of all, most people did not believe in Jose's miraculous survival story. Doctors diagnosed him with partial memory loss and dehydration, and that was after 14 months in the ocean. That seemed unbelievable compared to those fishermen who were lost for only 6 months and were found in much worse condition. Many people immediately accused Jose of cannibalism, saying that he could only survive by eating the body of Cordoba. Avaranga denied all accusations. In 2015, the Cordoba family sued a million dollars in the cannibalism case. Jose's lawyer believed that the Cordoba family filed a lawsuit after hearing the news of the book that was published soon after Jose's return. After the rescue, he tried to go to Mexico to see Cordoba's parents, as he promised. But he did not succeed because he was denied entry due to his long illegal stay in it. But the good news is that Jose finally met his parents and saw his daughter for the first time. I must say that Jose's story is quite remarkable. It's very interesting and unusual. If all the things he says are true, then the case is nothing less than incredible. It's one of the most profound survival stories in history. So what would you guys do if you were trapped in the ocean for 438 days? 
I really want to know what you guys would do. Don't forget to press the like button and subscribe if you like the video. Click the bell to stay tuned for more interesting stuff, remember to check out some of our other vids and we'll see you next time.